You ready? Let's do this. Readers, with Wonder Woman right around the corner, I thought this would be the perfect opportunity for me to return to talk about the graphic novel Wonder Woman Earth One Volume One. Again. Why? Because not only do I think I didn't make it clear enough that Grant Morrison can have all of my money, but also because I think the reasons that Grant Morrison decided to pick Diana and the Amazons in the way that he did is worth talking about. So I asked Owen here to help me. Say hi, Owen. Hi, Owen. Now you're... Now you're probably wondering why I asked Owen from Owen Likes Comics to help me with this video. And that's because Owen, you know, likes comics. Well, yeah, but bad wordplay aside for a second, you could have asked me to talk about anything Wonder Woman related. What specifically made you want to talk about Grant Morrison so much? Well, I figured since Grant Morrison's... And, and you're from... I like your videos. Fair enough. So, where should we start? Well, I figured that since we're talking about Grant Morrison's inspirations for the book, we should probably start from the source. Wonder Woman creator William Moulton Marston. One of the goals that Grant Morrison had in writing Earth One Volume One was to bring back some of the Golden Age weirdness that the character had. However, in this case, weirdness equals queerness. Queerness and bondage. Which said that way makes it sound like a two-for-one deal at Target that of course you'd pick up. Because, I mean, come on, it's two for one. Nobody ever passes up a two for one special, no matter what it is. Now, this is, of course, because of Wonder Woman's Golden Age history and her multiple influences. Marston himself and his partners Elizabeth Holloway and Olive Byrne in a time where polygamy wasn't really looked at in the light that it is now outside of Mormonism. And, you know, rich people. Over the course of Marston's run on Wonder Woman, it was laced in themes of bondage, dominance, and submission. From the activities of the Amazons, to the Lasso of Truth, to the way Diana handled her villains. And this theme has been referenced in Grant Morrison's Earth One take of the character in spades. Including the cover and significant events that happened over the course of the story. The queerness, however, goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. Grant Morrison's take on the character in his Earth One book established a lot of things that we as hardcore DC fans pretty much figured out on our own before DC decided to establish it in the main universe. What I mean is that Grant Morrison's Wonder Woman Earth One Volume One established Diana as bisexual in April of 2016. DC Comics didn't establish her as bisexual in the main continuity until September of 2016. Just about all the Amazons were in same-sex relationships, and even Diana had a lover until she stumbled upon Steve Trevor. Which Morrison established in multiple interviews that he didn't want to rush into a romance between Diana and Steve in Volume 1. Mostly because he wanted to make their dynamic feel as authentic as possible while working on Volumes 2 and 3, and I am so happy he made that executive decision. Now, of course, there's more to Grant Morrison's Wonder Woman than just kinks and LGBT plus representation. There's also the accurate representation of both proper and extreme feminism. But I think I'll let Owen take over things from here. In Wonder Woman Earth One, the themes of feminism and female empowerment are very much intertwined with Morrison's take on both the characters and the basic narrative of the story, aiming to adapt Wonder Woman's existing mythology and lore in a way that is both faithful to the original incarnation of the character, while also presenting themes and concepts which resonate with current and modern audiences, adding a real sense of relevancy to a character created many decades ago. For example, one way in how Morrison balances this notion is through the comic's opening pages where we're treated to a flashback sequence of Hippolyta's time under the rule of Hercules, opening with the line, to heal bitch of Hercules, before contrasting to present day Themyscira, a beautiful paradise comprised solely of females, and Morrison resisting the temptation to present the Amazonians as little more than Xeno-esque warriors, spends time demonstrating the cultural advances of this civilization with their own literature, art, and technology. Morrison depicts the Amazons as an almost feminist utopian society, but throughout the book begins to weave in questions 
over the ethical and social concerns of such, and this is done mainly through the trial of Diana's story, with the contrasting view between the Amazons over Diana's visit to man's world previously, with the comic opening with Hippolyta's defeat of Hercules before transitioning over to Diana's return from man's world with Steve Trevor, we get an understanding of why Diana was met with such outrage, but whether it was just or not is a different question. While Morrison highlights the problems that a male-driven society has, he writes this argument in a way which demonstrates both sides characterising the more elder Amazonians as having almost a sense of superiority against man's world, with Hippolyta stating that their masculinity is a sad, broken aberration of nature, genetically incomplete man, always yearning for what he cannot be or own. And this presents contrasting viewpoints on the ideas of feminism, with the Amazons taking on more of an extreme form of such, deeming themselves to be superior to man's world, whereas Diana looks to help Steve Trevor, and also seeks to help the rest of the world. However, Morrison's main argument doesn't seem to be so much about gender superiority, as much as it is about accepting both the good and the bad sides of the society you live in. The use of feminism in the writing allows the book to discuss the notion of equality and social divisions in our world, and one intriguing way in how they do this is through the reinvention of Steve Trevor, now depicted by Yannick Paquette as African American. The decision to change Trevor's race in this story benefits the narrative tremendously, allowing Steve to become a more empathetic character in the eyes of both the readers and the Amazonians. In a scene after Trevor arrives on Themyscira, he is placed in chains by Diana as part of a trust ritual, and Morrison uses this to explore the themes of oppression. Steve, whose ancestors were brought over to America during the slave trade, finds himself fighting for said country in a war, with the oppression suffered by his ancestors and his race mirroring that of the Amazonians under Hercules, but also to the notion that men are not only the oppressive, but also that men too are oppressed in this world. You, you, you see, I told you Owen likes comics. So readers, your homework assignment for the day. Write in the comments section below if you have a favorite interpretation of Wonder Woman in the comics and who it's by. Whether it be by Grant Morrison, whether it be by Brian Azzarello, whether it be by Gail Simone or any other writers. I also decided to help Owen out on a video that he has for his channel, so check it out and make sure you subscribe to him, he does awesome stuff. And while you're at it, subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications, because I post new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and every other Friday. But until then, this is Redis101. Class dismissed.